Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. The controls update for Astroneer is live, so let's take a look at what's new, what's changed, and talk about first impressions of this update. As the name implies, this update focuses on the controls in Astroneer. This not only moves control configuration to its own new tab for both controllers and mouse and keyboard, but also adds in mouse and keyboard support for consoles and a lot of accessibility options. We can also remap controller inputs and extra mouse buttons. While all of that sounds fairly basic, it does bring a lot of customization options. Now, whether you play with a controller or with mouse and keyboard, you can customize your control to your heart's content. But more importantly, this brings about a lot of improvements with regards to accessibility. Many options that require a hold action can now be set to a toggle instead, meaning you won't have to hold down more than one button at a time. And the added control customization means that you can remap your controls according to your own needs. In addition to the controls remapping, there are other improvements as well. The portable oxygenator will fade out its audio loop when attached to your backpack, though it will remain operational. The camera should now handle tight spaces better with less random zooming in and out. It should also be better at responding to movement up or down slopes and should no longer lose sight of your astroneer when moving at very high speeds. The drill UI has received some updates as well. It will now accurately display the angle of the drill relative to the rover, meaning the UI should no longer drift as the drill moves to align with the UI. Rovers now maintain a steady speed when drilling instead of constantly gaining speed when drilling downhill, which will prevent your rover going faster than the drill can. Drilling also has hard upwards and downwards tilt to prevent the rover from flipping over or losing traction. And drills are automatically disabled if the rover starts to point vertically up or down. The landing zones have seen some improvement as well. Landing zones now have icons pointing to them and tooltips to help identify them. Additionally, naturally occurring landing zones still have the familiar dome shape, while player-based landing pads will have a cylindrical shape along with a unique icon and label. And if you're using a controller, you will receive a prompt notifying you to use the virtual cursor to select a landing zone. Finally, composite resources now have byte values and can be researched in the research chamber, while all researchable resources have had their research Research time changed to five minutes total, and their byte values have been adjusted accordingly. Oh, wait, there is one more thing, but I'm not going to say a lot about it. If you happen to encounter a zebra, leopard, or checkers marble, you might want to take a closer look. It seems that our marble friends now have a bit more to offer than merely accepting our praise and admiration. Special thanks to Finnick Potato for bringing this one to my attention. If you're having trouble finding any marbles to investigate, you might try making use of Usagi's ability to locate shiny things. There are also new items available in the Exo Outfitters store. You can pick up the Exotech bundle, which includes the control unit hat, gridlock palette, and error code visor. There is also a new aquatic suit, encrypted creepers hat, fish emote, and biohazard visor. This update also brings about the return of the Exo Salvage Initiative limited time event. You can collect debris bundles and scrap to unlock rewards. You'll get 25 points for a debris bundle, 50 points for a scrap nugget, 100 points for a tier 1 debris package, and 300 points for a tier 2 debris package. Attach the scrap or debris to your Exo Request platform to redeem your points. At 1500 points, you unlock the Salvage Throwback Bundle, which includes the Going Green Pallet and Wired Hat. At 4200 points, will unlock the cone hat. 8,000 rewards you with the stop sign emote, and 14,000 gives you the safety orange pilot. You will, as usual, receive useful items and resources along the way, and after completing the event, including clay, graphite, copper, iron, titanium, tungsten, and nanocarbon alloy, hydrazine and jetpacks, exochips, and QTRTGs. There were several bug fixes and localization corrections in this update as well. You can check out the patch notes on the Astroneer blog to read them all. I'll include a link in the description description below. So, let's talk about first impressions of this update. To be honest, today was the first time in almost a month since I last played Astroneer. I am simply faced with the lack of new things to do in Astroneer, and I'll talk about that more in just a moment. While this update does not do anything to address that burnout, it is still an important update. Bringing about greater accessibility via new control options is an excellent addition to the game, and it should make it easier and more enjoyable for the 
those who might require special control accommodations. In my book, that is a huge win, and System Era should be commended for those changes. I did play the game briefly after the update dropped, and I can confirm that the camera behaves much more predictably in tighter spaces. It will still zoom in under certain circumstances, but it didn't feel as drastic. I also drilled to the core of a planet using a large rover drill and paver. It definitely took a lot longer to get all the way down there, and I couldn't drill down as steeply as I used to. But if the slowdown and shallower ramps means I won't find my rover suddenly tried to pave a vertical ramp, I'm all for it. The landing zone overhaul is kinda nice as well. While I'm not sure that the landing zones needed the icons, the unique cylindrical shape for the landing pads is a nice touch. If all of the landing zones are going to have an icon, however, it'd be nice if we had some way to change its marker so that we could easily return to the same landing zone later without the need for a beacon as well. And the new marble functionality is really cool. Seriously, go find a marble and have fun. As far as the limited time event, System Era, it's time to revisit these. I like the LTEs, but they have gotten incredibly repetitive. I think it is time to sunset the existing events and come up with some new ones. Sure, I'll take part in this event to get the unlockable rewards, but I'm not really looking forward to it. And those are my thoughts on this update, but I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Or better yet, join the Vainglorious Community Discord server and hit up our Astroneer channel to talk about it. Before I wrap it up today, I want to talk about why Astroneer has not been present on my channel or in my live streams lately. As I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of burned out on the game. I have seen the end credits and completed all of the missions more times than I can count. I have even taken on my own unique challenges to try to give me something new to try or even change how I approach the game. All of that has run its course and, well, that leaves me not wanting to play. Mind you, I am a guy who can get a lot of replay out of a game. I have over 8,000 hours in the various Civilization series, over 6,000 in GTA Online, nearly 2,000 in City Skylines, and hundreds of hours in dozens of other games. I'm a gamer, and one who does not get bored easily. I am also a gamer who still absolutely loves and adores Astroneer. I tell people about it all of the time, and I encourage anyone who has not played it to buy a copy. Astroneer is a phenomenal game made by an amazing group of people, but I just need a break from it for a while. On top of the burnout, some of the lingering bugs have pushed my patience beyond the breaking point. I grow weary of having items suddenly disappearing into the ground again, and I am absolutely fed up with rovers running into invisible obstacles. The former seem to have been fixed for quite a while, but returned with the Xenobiology update. I have no idea if the controls update does anything to fix this, and I'm not all that eager to find out. And the latter, with rovers getting stuck on absolutely nothing, I really hoped that the so-called sticky boots fix would have addressed this problem as well. I spend significantly more time in rovers than I do on foot, so it is a problem I encounter frequently when I play Astroneer. I also still feel that the power rebalancing was done improperly, and I still absolutely despise the presence of exochips without the ability to just craft the damn things myself. But the burnout and impatience with the bugs and what I feel were poor decisions does not mean I will not ever play Astroneer again. In fact, I'll be streaming it again tomorrow night. I was invited to help a fellow content creator celebrate a milestone in a weird project they're working on, so I'll be streaming my perspective of that. After, I will probably jump to completing the current LTE with an automated scrap setup I have. But beyond tomorrow night's stream, I remain hopeful for the future of Astroneer. I won't betray the confidence of anything said to me in private, but I do know the team at System Era has spent some time investigating ways to address the problem of burnout. And I know that they continue to put in the hard work to identify the source of various game bugs and get them squashed. The controls update has a huge list of bugs that were fixed, and I know that future updates will do the same. As far as game balancing and exochips, I don't know, maybe I just need to send a bunch of cookies to System Error or something. All of that was really to say, I still love Astroneer. I still have plans for covering Astroneer updates, and even bringing back streams, let's plays, and an entire reboot 
of Ashton Air Academy. But for now, I'm taking a break so that when I do return, I can do so from a refresh perspective. And that's going to do it for my coverage of the controls update. If you are new to Ashton Air or my channel, be sure to check out all of my Ashton Air content, including two Let's Play series, update coverage, and Ashton Air Academy, which covers all things Ashton Air from surviving your very first day all the way through completing the game and beyond. And until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.